Elizabeth Ann Gill, also known as Beth, disappeared at age two. She was born on August the 21st, 1962, and was the youngest of ten siblings. According to her relatives, she is kind-hearted, trusting, and friendly. Best family home in Cape Girardeau gave them a sense of security. Even today, many of the area's 40,000 residents remember her story. Beth vanished from her home on June the 13th, 1965. While her father was away and her mother was returning from Chicago to Missouri, her siblings and other children searched for her, and one of them called the police. The early hunt for Beth included scouring the surrounding area and troweling the Mississippi River. The next day, a local mechanic tipped off the Cape Girardeau police. The mechanic reported that a couple had been waiting for a part for their 1965 Chevy truck scheduled to arrive on June the 14th. The pair had checked out of their motel around the time Beth vanished, and the mechanic had learned they had a history of using fake names and changing license plates. The truck was traced back to a dealership in Lake Orion, Michigan, Harry Gill, Martha's father, requested that the FBI be involved in the investigation to find the couple from the motel. In a letter to President Lyndon Johnson on Christmas Day, 1966, he wrote, If these persons could be found, I feel certain our little girl will be found, or at least we can learn what happened to her. He closed the letter by noting, My three brothers and I all volunteered to serve our country in World War II. I served from January 1941 to December 1945. Now I am asking through you that my country serve my family's need. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover responded to the letter that had been forwarded to the FBI by the White House a few weeks later in January 1967. Although Elizabeth was added to the FBI's missing person files in April 1966, Hoover wrote, I must advise you that the FBI is precluded from conducting an active investigation concerning missing persons in the absence of evidence indicating a violation within our investigative jurisdiction. Hoover added that the FBI would keep in touch with Cape Girardeau police should any evidence indicating an abduction in violation of the federal kidnapping statute come to light. A family DNA sample was taken from one of Elizabeth's surviving siblings with the assistance of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in the hopes that a match can be made. Thankfully, the FBI revisited the case in 2010 and classed it as a kidnapping. Beth's parents have both since passed away, not knowing what happened to their daughter. Beth's sister Martha said to Dateline that their mother had expressed hope that modern technology could help locate her daughter. Elizabeth, also known as Beth or Betsy, is a white female with brown hair and blue eyes. She was 2 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 22 pounds when she disappeared. Beth would be 61 years old today. The last time she was seen, she was wearing a green top and white shorts and had a chicken pox scar on her right elbow. According to my research, it appears that Beth has always been believed to be alive and that this incident was a kidnapping. She very well could still be present, but she is unaware of her true identity. 
If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Elizabeth Ann Gill, please call the Cape Girardeau Police Department at 573-335-6621. It is very possible Beth can be found. The Center for Missing and Exploited Children have found missing children dating back to the 1940s. I cannot begin to imagine what this family has gone through. As I was restoring their pictures of them playing in their backyard with Beth, a rush of sadness came over me. I looked at the picture of their old family home where there was once so much happiness. I then looked at the current picture of the site where their home once stood. The home, the backyard, and that beautiful tree they played under are all gone now, including Beth. There is nothing there time has not touched. Beth's siblings look for her every day. Their dedication is amazing. Their hearts are broken. I cannot imagine playing with my sister when we were small, and then one day she is just gone. It would leave a terrible void that could never be filled. This story angers me greatly. Even if this couple longed for a child they could not have, they took a baby away from a family that adored her out of selfishness, altering their lives forever. I can only hope the couple that took Beth were good to her. Please share your thoughts with me.